this video is truly doomed and not just because i'm updating you guys on my february basket of doom but it just seems like everything is already going wrong <laughs> So let's see how it goes. Today, I'm going over all the items that I put in my basket of doom for the month of February. Let's take a look at what I got to use and what I think about those products and whether they are going to stay in my collection. Well, hi everyone. I don't think this is going to end up being a Martini Monday because it is already very, very late on Sunday. So technically it is already Monday and I have a very busy Monday. So I don't see how I can possibly edit and get this video up in time. Not to mention, I'm not drinking a Martini. In fact, wait for it, you're gonna laugh. I'm having a cup of tea in my piggy mug. I know, pretty funny. Even if I was filming a Martini Monday, which I sorta am, I just don't think I'll make it in time to post it. I just could not bring myself to A, make a martini and B, drink a martini. I attended a concert earlier today that my friends uh, played and it was a one piano forehand recital and we already had some Prosecco afterwards. I have a killer headache, so I really just wanted a cup of tea. And those of you that know, because I've talked about it recently, I had to close down my brick and mortar music school. I used to have these animal mugs there, both for myself and the parents and the kids, and it was always just very fun. I have a bunch of different animals. And because one of the pieces on the program today of the concert that I just attended was Carnival of the Animals, it inspired me to pull out my piggy mug. I actually have an elephant mug, I just realized, and one of the pieces in the Saint-Saëns Carnival of the Animals cycle is an elephant. So so I probably should have gone with that, but the picky just spoke to me. She's here to cheer me up because this rant has nothing to do with the video. This rant has to do with the fact that I am wearing the most amazing red lipstick. Look at it. It's amazing. And it was a gift. It was such a kind and generous and amazing gift from my friend Kelly at Keep Beauty Real. She and her fiance just recently took a Caribbean cruise vacation and it so happened it was leaving and coming back in and out of New York City. I got to spend two half days with them. In fact, I will put in my description or maybe even link it up in the cards, wherever it is, her vlog, her vacation vlog, because it was really, really fun for me to watch her vacation since I did get to hear them speak about it a little bit in person when they came back, when we were hanging out here in New York. And as a, such a generous and kind and thoughtful gift for me showing them around and hanging out, Kelly got me the Lisa Eldridge lip liner and lipstick in velvet ribbon. It is what is on my face. Kelly knows I love a red lip. I also wear red lipstick on stage pretty much exclusively and we have had conversations about me wanting to try a red lipstick from Lisa Eldridge before so it was just it was so thoughtful. It was so considerate. It was so kind and I have worn it now. I think this is my third time wearing the lip liner and lipstick combo and I've have had it on all day and I just went to reapply it for this video and opened it up and when I opened it up at that moment because of course it was in my bag and when I went to try to roll up the lipstick the spot where the lipstick usually goes was empty and I nearly had a heart attack so the whole entire lipstick ended up falling into the cap. And I, of course, have managed to just put it back, but it is now so wobbly and so wiggly because it is completely broken at the base. And I I need tips, guys. I need tips for how to fix this situation because when I went to reapply it just now, it really was super wobbly. And I know, I know it's just a lipstick, regardless of the fact that now it, there's also sentiment attached to it. I understand that it is just a lipstick and I can go on the website website and easily replace it. But aside from the fact that it is sentimental, I know how much these lipsticks are. This lipstick should not be breaking after two or three uses. So if you have any tips for how to fix it, if that's a thing, if I can fix it where it's not going to drive me crazy, obviously by now the sides, those velvety sides are all scratched up from it falling out. If you own a Lisa Eldridge lipstick, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so that's how we started off this video. It's already one o'clock in the morning. I have a splitting headache and my Lisa Eldridge velvet ribbon, which was a gift, broke. 
how i have no idea but it just broke the whole thing just fell out anyway to turn this night around let's go through my basket of doom from the month of february before i do i'm so sorry to be negative nancy over here but if you haven't met me before i promise i'm not always like this my name is natalia i'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty and this year is a year of discovery for me i am trying to go through as much of the makeup in my collection that has yet to be used and there's quite a bit of that and i'm also trying to rediscover older products in my collection and see if they're still serving me if I'm going to keep them or not so basically I am kind of on a low buy and I'm really trying to get to know the products revisit old ones get to know new ones that are already here in my New York City studio apartment if you are interested in seeing that and seeing my journey through my collection this year then I hope that you will consider subscribing let's take a look at what I'm keeping from my my basket or baggy of doom for the month of February. Okay, yes, it is March 19th. Yes, I understand I'm very late. And yes, I know I've already rambled about the lipstick fiasco long enough. But let me preface this video with one more ramble. In the month of February, I wore makeup very, very little. I had a crazy month because I was moving out of my brick and mortar. So two weeks, uh, basically, I did not wear makeup, I think, at all. And I also, probably due to the stress of everything that was going on in my life, developed multiple cold sores on my lips. Um, and of course, because of that, I also wore even less makeup. So I did not get to try absolutely everything in my baggie of doom. I did actually though go through, I feel like more than I expected. Like looking back at first, I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to talk about? I probably haven't tried a single thing in here, but I did. I guess the first week or so of February, I made an effort to actually use a few of these products. So I think I still have uh, at least somewhat of a handle on some of these. With all of that housekeeping and all the announcements and whatever, all the disclaimers out of the way, let's get going. I chose out two primers to try. I don't think I really picked the greatest of months for either one of these. I went with the Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer, which was a smoothing primer. And it, to me, has a little bit of that not the really super annoying silicone texture because i do not like silicone primers but there's a tiny little bit of something something that reminds me of that so to me this kind of is more of a pore filling primer i really still to this day like this one i used to use this a lot back in the day when these came out i just saw i think i watched um kara from beauty and the frizz do her new makeup releases or what she calls the makeup protection program or somebody else maybe it was Daniela Caniquist. i can't remember i saw somebody do a new makeup releases video and talk about how I think Makeup Forever is coming out with an entire new line of their makeup primers. So I guess maybe they are replacing the existing ones with those. But I still really like this one. There's very, very little left. The little sticker means I've had this in a project pan for myself before I started my YouTube channel. I used to do that. I used to do project pans alongside some of the people that I would watch project pan. And one of the ways that I would keep track of which products I want to try to use up or hit pan on or whatever is I would put little stickers on them because I have stickers everywhere. I'm a music teacher. I work with kids. Um, the other primer that I decided to try is the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. So this one, this is the one that I feel like I actually could use up if it was more warm and more humid. And of course, in the month of February, it was none of those things. So I'm going to keep keep both of these and I'm going to see if I remember to revisit them sometime towards the summer months and then if at the end of the year I still haven't uh, made a dent on these or used these up maybe at that point they will actually be doomed out of here but for now they get to stay I did not pick out a foundation I'm still working on trying three different samples that I got in Sephora I got the Mario foundation which I guess by now is no longer new but it is new still to me I got the house labs foundation 
situation to try. And I think an Yves Saint Laurent, like a tinted balm situation, tinted moisturizer or whatever. So I'm still, still gathering my thoughts on those. I'm not really a review channel, so I don't know how good my reviews would be just because I don't really have much experience with that. But if you want to hear my thoughts on those three foundations in the future, uh, definitely let me know. I am tempted as of right now to purchase one of those sometime in the future. And uh, it might actually surprise uh, a lot of people which one, because I know it's not, it's not maybe what the majority of the people at least I know know and I communicate with have told me they feel differently about this product. Let's put it that way. We are not here to talk about that. All of that was to say I didn't have a foundation in here. However, I did have a concealer. The Milani Conceal and Perfect. It's a little heavy and drying for me. I am 41, going to be 42 in just a few months, but I didn't hate it enough to just dispose of it. I feel like I could use this up and I am not one to just toss products. So I feel like, you know, if it's really something I know I'm not going to reach for because it might be a mediocre product or I grew out of it or I have other things that are now better, then I I do usually kind of move on from that product. But I feel like with concealer, as long as I know that it will get some use, I should keep it and try to still use this more. So I'm going to do that and we shall see what happens. Okay, for other face products, I had two bronzers. I pulled out this Physicians Formula Bronze Booster Glow Boosting Beauty Balm BB Bronzer. Too many words. I've had this for a really long time and I don't know if it's because it is old, but I feel like it was really hard to pick up product. It's like super densely packed in there or maybe it's just dried out and like all stuck together. And then the product that I did manage to get out of there, I don't think matches my skin tone well enough for me to fight with this thing. I feel like it is a little bit too yellow on me. That tends to be a problem with my very pale, what I think neutral toned skin. I feel like if the bronzer is more on the yellow orange side, it has to be super, super light for me not to be bothered by the tone of it. But in general, I just like more cooler tone or more neutral toned bronzers. And this was not it. So I have a feeling if I let this just sit around, I'm not going to reach for it. So this this one is going to be leaving my collection. However, I also pulled in this little pure sculpt palette. This is the Quick Pro Portables Sculpt and Glow On The Go Contour Palette. And it has three shades, Silhouette, Go Figure, and bronze. And as I predicted, the main shade that works for me is this one right here. It's the more matte, more cool, neutral, more contoury or whatever shade of the three. This one is the one that has some glow to it. And this one is the more warm of the three. This as long as I can find a brush small enough, or, you know, as long as I don't mind getting a little bit of the other ones in there, this, I really, really enjoyed. So I know I said, I think in my intro that if just one of these shades works for me, I'll probably get rid of it because what's the point? I'm gonna keep it for this shade, even if this is the only one that I use up and because it's so teeny tiny, perfect for travel, perfect for on the go. I know it's not the best thing and I know it's not something to be proud of, but I do my makeup so many times, either on the subway or in the car, that things like this are so great for me. This is gonna gonna stay. Oh, I forgot a powder. I forgot. Well, it's actually a powder foundation. It's the Laura Geller Baked Balance and Glow Illuminating Foundation in Porcelain. To be honest, I mean, yes, it has flex in here and I really thought that it would be a little bit more illuminating. I'm dry. My skin is dry. And again, maybe February was just an awful month to decide to pull in a powder or foundation, but I was going to use it as more of a powder rather than a foundation, which is exactly what I did. I don't know. It didn't wow me. At the same time, I remember I used to really love Laura Geller powder products, so I'm tempted to keep it and give it another shot in the warmer months. I don't know. If you guys have this, Give me your thoughts on it. Do you think that if I am dry, this will work for me later on in the year? Should I bring this back into a future basket of doom and test this out again? 
because that's kind of what I'm leaning towards, but I don't know, I'm not sure. This is one of those I could not make a decision on, to be honest. All right, now we have a few blushes and highlighters. I picked out three blushes for the month of February and I did end up using all three and I am torn on two of them. I pulled out my MAC Koi Girl. This is a sheer tone uh, blush. I don't know if they still make this. This is very old, but it reminded me of these pink colors that are so in right now. Plus it is in general a blush that I have for years like to pull out in the winter. So I thought February would be perfect. And it definitely has use both from me using it a few times back in February and also just from me really enjoying it in the past. So definitely gotten some use out of it. It wasn't like bad, so that's why I'm torn. It looked nice, but it wasn't anything wow either i think that's because lately maybe with just me wanting more glow on my aging duller skin lately i find myself gravitating more towards satin and glowy blushes as opposed to matte blushes i used to primarily only use matte blushes and right now i'm kind of on the cusp of i don't want my blush to be so glowy that it almost looks like a highlighter but i do want a little bit of a sheen or something at the minimum so i think that's why when i wore this blush a few times, I wasn't wowed because I think I'm right now expecting something else on my face. Having said that though, I'm one of those people that believes that everything old is new again at some point. So I don't know if I want to just get rid of it just so that later when maybe I'm back on the matte blush train, I end up wanting a color like this and not having one. Also, this is my only MAC blush and I think there's a part of me that wants to hold on to it for that purpose too but then there's a part of me that is telling myself that is ridiculous and silly. So yeah, I think I'm gonna let it go. I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna let it go mainly because I have a lot of blush and I really think I'm not gonna reach for it. I really think that 99% of the time something else is gonna win over this one. So yeah, unless you guys can convince me otherwise down in the comments. I think that is gonna go. Okay, wasn't sure what I was gonna do with that one. And then I have NARS El Maria, this very deep blush that I pull out also winter time only. This one, does this have a sheen? I don't know if this has a sheen. I don't think I really saw much of a sheen, but it wasn't quite as flat as the MAC. I did like it. I really liked it. Now here's why I'm torn, because I also pulled in Becca Luminous blush in Dahlia. And yes, I know Becca knows no longer and these blushes are not available, but this one is luminous. It's in the name. And even though these colors are not the same, they kind of give me a bit of a similar feel on the face, especially being how pale I am. I really, really enjoyed both. But I'm just torn, like, do I really need both? The argument for the fact that I want to keep them both is I really did enjoy both of them. And then the argument against one of them is, but I have so much blush, like how, how often am I really going to pull for one or the other, especially with my makeup wearing habits not being a daily wearer. I think for now I'm gonna keep both, I am. And then next winter, if I see that one or the other is being neglected, I will revisit that decision. Okay, and then for highlighter, I did a palette. I did a Laura Geller Life Glows On Illuminator palette. It has three shades in here in Opal Crush, um, French Fizz, and Diamond Dust. These are like holographic, duochrome highlighters. And I don't know if it's the age or I don't know if something has changed in my skin and my preferences, but while I liked these, I felt like they were a little bit dry and not really all that spectacular. Let me swatch these one more time before making my final decision because I'm definitely leaning towards getting rid of this palette. So there they are on my fingers. I don't know if you can see the shifts. I mean, the colors are beautiful. I really, really like the colors, but I don't know, again, I don't know if you can see even just on my fingers. And yes, my skin is very dry. Please excuse the eggs 
eczema and everything that I'm dealing with here still in pretty cold weather. I just, I don't know. I just didn't feel like these were what I remember the gelato swirls being. I just felt like on the face, they weren't that impactful. I didn't really see those beautiful shifts as much. Um, I, one of these I really liked, but I don't remember. It's been probably at least a month since I've actually worn this palette, since we are already nearing the end of March. But I just don't know if I want to keep this just for one. I feel like I have other highlighters. Do I have duochrome ones like this? No, not, not much, not really. But how often am I really going to want those? I think it's gonna go. This is a tough one. This is a tough one because I really thought when I was putting this in the basket of doom, this was like one of those products I was cheering for. I thought I would fall madly in love with those highlighters again. And I was so excited to revisit the uh, that little palette. And I was kind of disappointed, I remember, when using it. So for that reason, it's gotta go. Okay, let's do some randoms because I don't remember, maybe there's even something missing out of this bag, but it is what it is. For eyeshadow primer, the Milk Makeup, the Hydro Grip Eye Primer. I didn't have a terrible experience with this in the month of February. I remember using this sometime last year because this was actually a gift from a subscriber. And back then, whatever shadows I would use with this would crease on me. And usually eyeshadows don't crease on me very easily. Easily. So of course I would blame it on this. I think it's okay. I do think if I don't set it properly or use certain specific eyeshadows with this, I actually do think my eyeshadows crease with this. And I think for that reason, because it's already not a favorite eyeshadow primer out of the ones that I have, I'm almost never gonna reach for this. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. And then I had a couple of eyeliners. I had this Lorac a Front of the Line Pro in black. It's okay. It's a decent black eyeliner. It's not great. It's not bad. It's it's one of those, yeah, okay, cool. So for now, I'm gonna keep it because, you know, it's a black eyeliner. This Luna by Luna. Oh gosh, I do remember wearing it. I believe it was really dry, but I also think I kind of liked the color. To be honest, I don't remember. I remember wearing it once, but I don't remember what decision I came up with after wearing it once. I don't know if it was one of those, I should try it again, or one of those like decisions of, oh yeah, no, I'm never going to want to wear this again. So I guess, I guess in theory, I should give it another shot and not just get rid of it but I don't know if it's just the mood I'm in today, but it's gonna go. And then I pulled in two single liquid eyeshadows that I did not use, I'll be honest. So these are gonna roll over into next month. I am thinking it's not gonna get filmed today because I really do need to get to sleep, but I am thinking of doing, since we're already nearing the end of March and I hadn't gotten around to filming much this past month, my next basket of doom I think is gonna be a March, April, combo because it just doesn't make sense for me to try to do one for a 10 day time span. So I think these are gonna go in there, eyeshadow palettes. And I have four in front of me. I know I said that this year I was gonna do three old ones every month in my basket of doom, but I do remember for the month of February, I had decided to pull in four. Little did I know how that month was gonna go and how <laughs> I would not be wearing much makeup at all I only got to try two of them. I got to try the Milani Soft and Sultry. If you guys have been in the makeup world, you probably remember this beautiful neutral to cool tone palette. It is still lovely. I used this a couple of times, really enjoyed it. I think it is still so nice, but I do have to say the lightest shimmer, the one up there, if you guys can see it on my finger, super powdery, super patchy, super unexciting. I don't know if it's the age of this palette or if that shade was always like that. So while these other shades, I can make them work, that one, I really did not like. And as somebody as pale as I, if I am reaching into a palette and it has a bright, oops, sorry, it has a bright shade like that, I'm gonna wanna use it. I'm gonna wanna use it either to 
brighten up my lid or inner corner or something, I do use light shades quite a lot. So without that, and with the fact that it is an older palette and I feel like a lot of the other shades are also starting to get crumbly, I don't think this is worth for me to keep. So it is gonna go. And shockingly enough, for kind of similar ish reasons more about performance than anything else this stunning stunning i i absolutely love this packaging and i'm kind of tempted to somehow repurpose the actual palette if you have any recommendations for me please let me know i i adore this packaging but this is the provocateur uh, palette by nars i really like the colors i do it's a weird combination but i do like the colors However, I don't like the process of actually using this palette. I think some of the shades are really crumbly. Crumbly? <laughs> I think some of the shades are really crumbly, which makes them, for me at least personally, very difficult to use. I very often do not do my eye makeup first, so I really need to be careful with fallout. And when you have deep shades like this that are flying all over the place, it makes it really, really hard. And while I love the colors, as a cohesive palette, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I just don't see a lot of looks. I think it's because there's only one matte and it is that bricky red shade. So I don't feel like it really goes with everything else in this palette. I managed to create a couple of looks with this. In fact, I think I used this in one of my videos. If I have a picture, I will put something up. It kills me to get rid of this palette because there are a few shades in here that I really, really love. Love and because of this but I think I think it is just not practical for me to sit on this when I could either find another friend that would want this or I don't know honestly what I'm gonna do with it because I think it's too old to sell it but that packaging though oh, that packaging but it needs to go Okay, and then the two palettes that I did not get a chance to use was my Lorac Mega Pro. That was the very first one. That was the initial internet breaker, if you know, you know. And then my Wet n Wild uh, Lights Off palette. And we're already nearing April. I'm kind of wondering if I want to still play with such dark, deep, cool tones or if I want to start brightening things up a bit. I will make that decision when I actually pull together my March april basket of doom let's see i am forgetting oh lip products lip products my goodness i almost forgot and i think the reason for why i almost forgot is i wore a bunch of them in the first like week and a half of february and then because i broke out in all these cold sores i didn't wear them at all for the remainder of the month but my lip products were all of my bite beauty lipsticks and pencils and whatnot and you're probably wondering natalia how is it that you are so not grossed out by these products and they don't seem to be sticking to your hands and they seem to be so nice and shiny again? Well, that's because thanks to a subscriber who messaged me on Instagram, I managed to clean these off. So she recommended two things, either alcohol or um, if that doesn't work, she mentioned that I could also get like a nail polish top coat and just, I guess, paint that on and the packaging would be shiny, I would imagine in that case. But I guess once it dries, it would just have that smooth finish. I decided to try alcohol and it's weird because I feel like years ago when I started having this sticky issue with my Real Technique brushes and these bite lipsticks and some other products, I want to say I tried cleaning them off, but I'm wondering now if my brain thought I would just try makeup remover, uh, like the liquid kind, thinking, oh, well, if it takes off makeup and it is, you know, a makeup product, it should take it off. So maybe I didn't ever try alcohol before. I find that shocking, but this time it worked. Granted, I had to scrub for for a while. I think what it is, is it just takes off whatever top layer because now it just feels like regular smooth plastic. But I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. Like this, this one, for example, now has none of that grippy stuff that it used to. It's just a regular shiny plastic. I don't care. 
I actually prefer that because I'm not getting stuck to it. And there's still like little bits that I think I didn't quite get off, but I got off whatever I could or good enough for me to not have my hands like stick to it. Since my Bite Beauty lip products are now actually non-sticky and I can easily use them. I did, I used them a lot in the first week and a half and I really enjoyed them. And because of that, I don't even know if I wanna get rid of any of them. I thought, well, maybe I'll get rid of some, but I've used, let's see, what have I used? I've definitely used this Bite Beauty Matte Cream Lip Crayon in Coolies. I, did I use this one? Yes, I've definitely uh, used the other one in Tort. I really like these. These are the uh, high pigment uh, pencils. I have it in Sable, which is that nude color right there. I have it in Rhubarb, which is one of my favorites. It's more of like a mauve nude. And then I have it in pomegranate. So maybe pomegranate because pomegranate is a shiny red and I do prefer, as much as I love me a red, I do prefer a matte red. So if there is one that I'm going to get rid of, it's probably going to be pomegranate. And then I have three and I probably have other by products honestly lying around, but these I think were the ones that I found and threw in my February basket of doom. I have these three uh, matte cream lipsticks that were I think all part of like a berry collection eons ago. And I have Juniper, which I think is stunning. I wore, I think all three of these. Plum, which is this very deep one and Barbary, which is more of like a purpley berry. I believe, I know I mixed plum with something. I can't remember what I mixed plum with, but I remember I put it like more on the outside of my lips and then used a slightly lighter color on the inside. I don't know if it was these two or if I threw in like one of these other products in there, but I really like playing around with these. Now that it doesn't gross me out to touch them, I actually really enjoyed pulling for them again and using them. So I think they're gonna stay. I think I'll get rid of pomegranate because I don't think I'm gonna reach for it that often. So that's, yeah, I think I think that's a smart decision. I don't think it's just for the sake of getting rid of something because as I said, I'm not really that person, but I don't think I can see myself really pulling for pomegranate often enough to justify keeping it. But all of these others, they're gonna stay. So if you were here for the January basket of doom, you would have noticed that I didn't declutter quite as much but the point of this is not just to get rid of stuff. The point of this is to actually try products that are sitting in my collection and see what I truly think about them and whether I think I would use them again in the future. I still got rid of a few things. We got rid of the Physician's Formula Bronzer, the MAC Blush in Koi Girl, uh, Laura Geller Life Glows On, that's quite heartbreaking, Milk Eyeshadow Primer, Pomegranate, this little eyeliner that I don't know, subscription box eyeliner, I'm sure, and to eyeshadow palettes. I think that's it. I think that's all I got for you guys today. Cheers with my piggy. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you've been using lately. And uh, if you haven't already, please a quick reminder to subscribe. I hope that you guys are all doing really, really well. I hope that you're continuing to stay safe and healthy, take care of yourselves and those around you. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye guys.